Hi y'all, Kraken Latte here. It's that time again where I bring you my tips, facts, or experience that you may or may not find helpful. With a new expansion comes new content, new collectibles, and a new level range. And of course, that means it's time to dust off your alts or make new ones and skydive into that new max level. Just like in my previous leveling guides, I'm going to go over this expansion's new route step by step with you, so that you know exactly what to do. Let's look at a bit of prep we need to do first before we dig into the route itself. First, my guide uses the wonderful Adventure Mode version of Dragonflight leveling, which is unlocked account-wide and just permanently turned on after the first time you complete the entire leveling campaign with your first character through the Dragon Isles. You'll know if you've unlocked it because you would have seen this screen here after turning on the last campaign quest in Feldrassus. If you have not done that, you can't use this guide, so come back when you have. Second, at the time of this guide's release, the new heirloom upgrades are not yet available. However, once they are in a future patch, I highly recommend upgrading your heirlooms and using those during this guide, because it will make things way easier on you. Your heirlooms will almost always be much higher in item level than any quest gear you will get, which will help curb any difficulty spikes and this may increase your leveling speed. Third, I highly recommend you pick up professions, even if you don't intend to use them at max level. Gathering is preferred because it will be useful for the entire route, but crafting will work too. Fourth, I recommend getting the comfortable rider's barding mount equipment. This prevents you from getting dazed and dismounted from mobs, and yes, it works even with your dragon riding mounts, so it's a must-have for me. And last, I use four add-ons for leveling in Dragonflight. Paste, Tom Tom, Help Me Play, and BTW Quests plus BTW Quests Dragonflight. Paste lets you paste multiple waypoints at once, and Tom Tom lets you use those waypoints. Help Me Play has a boatload of features that make it a leveler's dream, and BTW Quests will help us locate those quests on our maps. They are all great add ons for various reasons, so I highly suggest picking them all up. So, let's dig right into the route. For our first step, we want to hit level 61.5 before questing in the Dragon Isles. We have four options for this step based on your preference. We will also be turning on War Mode for this step. If you don't, you will need to farm longer to meet the levels needed for this step. First things first before you do anything. If you're on a fresh level 60 and have not yet done the Dragonfly intro quest, that's good. Don't do it yet because we will want this later. It's okay if you have, that part will make sense when we come to it in step 4. We can go straight to the Dragon Isles without it anyways, just by taking the portal to Veldraken in Stormwind or Orgrimmar. So that's what we'll do when we head there, either in step 1 or step 2. Option 1. Gathering. Herbalism and or mining in Battle for Azeroth, Shadowlands, or Dragonflight zones. Having one or both of these gathering professions is the best option for this step, because it's the easiest, fastest, and won't cost you much. Plus, gathering professions are continually useful throughout the rest of the route as extra XP. And of course, you'll want to have flying unlocked to do these. If you don't, skip to option 3 or 4 because these are automatically terrible without it. This is also best done with full rested when you start as that will speed up XP gain, but if you don't, it's fine. Just expect to be closer to 30 minutes without it. There are tons of farming routes that will work great in all three expansions. And if you don't have a route you prefer of your own, I recommend looking up wowprofessions.com for their farming routes. Link is in description. Those are what I use. Also, if you come across any treasures while farming in BFA or Shadowlands, they have a chance to give XP, so certainly grab them. Dragonflight treasures don't seem to give XP though. The items you'll want before gathering are these. Comfortable Riders Barding Mount Equipment, as mentioned before. This prevents you from being dazed or dismounted while you're mounted, which is a must-have to avoid any unneeded combat in any expansion. If you choose to gather in BFA, Buy or craft one model hardened stirrups and the enchant gloves for Kul'Tiran or Xandalari herbalism or mining. 
You can only wear one, so if you have both gathering professions, I recommend the herb enchant since you have to land to gather those. Ore nodes are gatherable while flying thanks to the stirrups. If you don't want the model hardened stirrups or they're too expensive, you can use the sky golem mount instead. But you can only farm herbs with that while mounted and it does not work with mount equipment, so you will get dismounted if you get hit too much. If you choose to gather in Shadowlands, you'll just want the Enchant Gloves Shadowlands Gathering. For herbs only, use the Sky Golem mount and just be careful with mobs. There are no stirrups for this expansion, so if you add mining, you will have to dismount. So choose a route that looks like it won't have too many mobs to deal with. If you choose to gather in Dragonflight, know that there are no glove enchants or stirrups for gathering because those items have been grafted into the profession specialization system as abilities that you'll have to learn. So you will be doing a lot of dismounting until you do so. Because of this, and because there will be a lot more competition for nodes, I recommend the other two expansions to gather in. Still, it's your choice. Now we have option two, Dragonflight Crafting. This is specifically the Dragonflight Crafting Professions, because each time you craft something for the first time, you'll get XP. You'll get the most XP with two crafting professions, but any of them will do if you just have one. Keep in mind that the total XP will vary per crafting profession, and in case you do not hit 61.5 after doing all of your first time crafts, don't panic, you can make up for it in step two. You'll need to turn on war mode for this as well, as that will give you more XP for craft. The best part here is that Valdraken is a sanctuary city, so no one can attack you while in city limits. The downside to this option is that you will have to buy or farm materials for your crafts. Farming will take time, and you might as well use that to level, and buying mats could be expensive depending on your crafting, so that's why this is option number two. It's up to you. Option three, Veldrasis or Anaran Plains campaign only. I do not recommend this option as it can double even triple the time of the first two options. If you choose this, stick to just the campaign quests, the ones marked by the banner-shaped icon in your quest list, for the best time through either zone. The side quests in these zones don't hold up great with the XP they give for the time spent, so I don't recommend them. And option four, Time Walking Dungeons. These are a great alternative to questing again, as they are fairly easy and give good XP. The downside is your time here is total RNG, since queue times and the groups you pug with will vary greatly. This option is also only available when time walking is active, so check your calendar if you want to use this. Phew! Finally on to step two. I call this one tier, world quests, and rares. You'll see what I mean. This step is only 30 minutes if you choose wisely and attempt a decent path between objectives. Also, leave war mode on for this step. This step has multiple aspects, so pay attention. First, go around to the back of Valdraken and pick up the Jumpstart quest marked on your map. This is the first quest in the In Tears Footsteps campaign. Do a couple of quests here until you pick up the one that wants you to go to the Azure Span. Don't go just yet, hold on. Open up the paste add-on I recommended and copy and paste in the Anaran Plains and Thaldrassus waypoints found in the description of this video. Those are rares that have their own little bonus objectives, which will give us good XP. Paste and close to get those waypoints all ready. Now, open your map and look at world quests. Take stock of what's available and where they are relative to your quest in Azure Span and the Thaldrassus waypoints. You also need to be aware of the other zone world quests because the second tier challenge is in Onaran Plains and the third is in the Waking Shores. We will be doing all three of those quests. We will only need a minimum of five world quests, which may be spread across all four zones, but you can totally do as many more as you want, except the dragon racing world quests. Do not do those, not even one. We will need those for step five of this guide. Besides those, choose any of the easy and fast world quests, which are any of the ones that do not want you to kill anything. Pet battles, climbing, catalogers raft, banners and supplies that don't require combat, anything like those will be perfect for this. Whichever you choose, you need a minimum of five. 
If there are more available that are easy, certainly do them because that will be less you have to do in step 5. Don't waste your time doing all of the world quests though, it's not worth it. Now, once you've made a mental note of what's available, head toward the Azure Span tier quest and do all of the waypoint rares in Teldrassus and all of the easy world quests in both Teldrassus and Azure Span along the way. If you happen to fly over a rare that procs a bonus objective in Azure Span, do not do it. We will need those later. Only do the rares I've marked for you. Then do the Azure Span tier challenge after your world quests and rares and wait for the portal she'll give you back to Veldraken. Then take it. Once back, get the next quest for Anaran Plains and also do the new quest from the Goblin NPC. Before heading off, again take stock of what world quests are up in the Anaran Plains and where they are relative to the quest and waypoint rares. Do all of that there and take the portal back to Veldraken that the NPC gives you again. Now all the rares are done, so don't kill any more until I tell you to, even in the Waking Shores, which is where the next quest is. Again, do all of the easy world quests in that zone, do the tier quest, and then take the portal she gives you back. After turning in that quest, you'll get the fourth challenge, which is a dungeon. So that's where we stop with this quest line. You can abandon or untrack it for later. You should now be at least level 62.7. If you're higher than that, great, that's even better. On to step 3. We'll be questing in the Azure Span for a couple of hours and we'll go from level 62.7 to 66.6 .6, if you did the minimum 5 world quests in the previous step. Remember, if you're ahead, that's a good thing. Oh, and feel free to turn off War Mode. We don't need it here. I prefer to quest without being heckled. Either way, I have a specific route here for you to follow, so listen up. Check out the map of the Anaran Plains and note the campaign quest in the south that's called To the Azure Span. That's where we're starting. So fly over there, pick it up, and follow it to Kiri's fishing spot. Once there, do all the quests in this little area except for the one, ironically, from Kiri. It's just a fishing quest, but it can take forever if you have bad RNG like me, so I prefer to skip it. When you're done with those, follow the campaign quest over to Camp Antonitis and do everything there. Do all the campaign quests and side quests that become available. If Nessingwary happens to be passing through, skip his quests. Not only is he not reliably available, his quests are spread out and tend to be difficult. Once you've done everything in Camp Antonitis and the campaign wants you to go find Kalik, put a pause on that. We're actually going to go do a bunch of side quests first. If you picked up the BTW quest add-on like I recommended, you'll see a couple of quests marked at the very northeast of Azure Span called Wayward Tools and Hollow Up. That's where we're going first. Once there in the Winter Pelt area, do all of the quests available at this spot. These won't take you very long. And as a side note, since I have made this guide before the Winterpelt clan becomes a grindable faction in a later patch, I have no idea what will become of this area, if anything. So if anything changes, hopefully the leveling only improves here and not the other way around. Anyway, once done with the Winterpelt, head south to the next quest marked on the map called Prowling Predators. Do all of the quests in this little spot up through the final one where you will rescue all the tiny little Slyvern pups. Do know that you can use the quest item to stealth past the giants. Don't bother fighting them, they hurt a lot. After that, head east to take down a rare called the Summoned Destroyer. If you would like the waypoints for all of the rares we'll be killing in Azure Span and the Waking Shores, those are also linked in the description but they will be easy to find and are a part of the route, so don't go doing them all at once. I also recommend equipping the trinket from this rare if you're lucky enough to get it, and then putting it on your bars for use. Its ability can do some major damage to enemies, so it's handy if you find yourself in a bind. Now head back west and down to the quest marked on the map as Field Medic 101. Do all the quests in this little area as well as the bonus objective that will pop up during the part with the Snowhide Knolls. The end of the Field Medic chain here sends you up north a little ways to turn in a quest to Old Grimtusk. 
he'll give you a quest to do some fishing, because what else do Tuskar do apparently? And yes, we do want to do this one, because he will give us three more quests after we turn that in. Don't go do those immediately though, we will do them toward the end of this zone's route. Just hang on to them. Now go southeast again to the next quest labeled The Ailing Apprentice. There's a good chunk of quests here and you'll need to do them all. Things here can hurt if you're a squishy class, so try to choose your battles carefully. You can also use the flamethrower on the spiders, which is pretty nice. After destroying the evil book and turning in that quest, that's it for this spot so now we can head down to Camp Nowhere, which we have a couple of quests leading us to anyways. There are two parts to the Camp Nowhere quest chains and we're doing them both. Start with the To the Ruins one and finish that one to its end. Then head to the Broken Traditions, Broken Values chain with more Furbolgs and do everything there until you're sent back to Camp Nowhere for the final turn in. Now we're heading west to the Mammoth's Matter quest, not far from the campaign to meet Kalik. You'll notice the Eight-Legged Menace quest on the map, but we're skipping those because they just aren't worth the trouble. Hence the name, ironically. Once at the right quest, do all the quests for the Tuskar in this area, ending with the River Ride quest. If you're quick, you can net all of the fish before the first waterfall and just leave the vehicle, which will put you back where you started. Turn in that quest and move on to meeting Kalikos. We've made him wait long enough. Once you're up in the Azure Archives area, kill the Forgotten Creation Rare up in a little alcove, and then do all the quests until they send you elsewhere. The Mana Worms up at the top can really hurt, and the Arcane Blast coming from the portal thingies can knock you off the side, so be careful up there. After that, follow the campaign back to Camp Antonitis and do all the quests there yet again. There will be a couple of more side quests to do here, and you will get the next step in the campaign as well. This time, follow up the campaign immediately to find Brenna once you're done at the camp. When you pick up the quests from Brenna and Elder Poa, make sure to wait for her to stop talking so you can get all of her quests. Our next rare, Sharp Fang, is also in this area, so go take out all the gnolls attacking the mage to spawn him. Do all the quests within this area and there's not really anything we'll be skipping in this part, so just keep going until we reach this little break after this spot in the pace where we need to inspect some bodies. Don't bother to pick up the Falling Waterfalls quest from the Tuskar standing behind the group. We're not going to be doing any of the quests in the northwesternmost part of the map, and we're also skipping the Wastewater Cleanup quests down south. After turning in the quest from inspecting the bodies, which you can do while mounted by the way, kill the next rare, Cascade, and then do a quest we picked up from Grim Tusk toward the start. All brawn, no brains. After doing his little circle drawing quest, which can be infuriating because the big circle likes to not work sometimes, continue on with the campaign. Do all of the quests in this area, including the bonus objective that pops up and our next rare nearby, the Krill. Kalik's image will pop in and help with some impressive damage in the bonus objective area. Thank you, Kalik. So you can pull a little more than you might be used to to speed things up here. After cleaning up the rot from the ley line and trying to wrap your brain around how arcane energy can rot, carry on to Iskara. Since this is a renown hub and also the location of the soup event, it might be a bit chaotic and visually confusing. So just pick up every quest you see in the area before doing anything and then we can go from there. We're not doing all the quests, so untrack Brackenhide Hollow, that's the dungeon quest, untrack the wanted quest, untrack Fishing Aileron Sea Moth, and untrack Nook News. We're not doing any of those. Also, don't bother with a soup event if it's active. We're not here for that. Everything else, however, we are doing. Once you've done all the quests except the ones we've untracked in this area, and you've got the next quest to head back to the Azure Archives, turn and head north first because we need to do the last quest from Grim Tusk, a far Firbolg friend. Fly up to that Firbolg, do the quest he gives, and then continue all the way back to the Azure Archives. Try to get some good elevation as well so you don't run out of vigor, since it's quite a ways higher than sea level. The quests here are short and just activate a cutscene, and then want you to head to Ronin's Shield. 
But first, let's head to Old Grimtusk and bring that quest chain to a close. Help Grimtusk and friends take out Frostbite, who you may recognize from earlier in the zone, turn that quest in, and then move on to Ronin's Shield. Once we're done there, turn in the quest and do the one little side quest here to shoot some protos, and we're done with Azure Span. Yes, we are skipping the end of the campaign because it's just too much of a pain and gives a lot less XP than you'd think. So let's move on. Woof, that was a lot, eh? Don't worry, Waking Shores is a lot simpler. We're going to be focusing mainly on the campaign quest for this zone, so it should be much easier to follow along with. Still, we are skipping things and killing rares along the way, so let's go over this zone's route as well. First, there is an expansion intro quest that we've not addressed. We're doing that now. Head back to Stormwind or Orgrimmar and do the Call of the Isles quests. These don't take very long, they don't give much XP, like nothing, but you will want them so that we can do the intro spot in the Waking Shores, which will give us some good XP. Wait for your ride to the Isles, and then get started once there. Do the quests found by the docks in the intro area of the Wild Coast, as well as two rares in the same area. There is one for the Alliance, which is the Primal Scythed Queen, and one for the Horde, which is the Ancient Hornswog but you can do both as either faction, so that's what we'll do here for the extra XP. You may want the waypoints for them since these two are a bit off the main path, so grab those from the description. The rest of the Waking Shores rares waypoints are there too, if you'd like them. Once done with those rares, turn in your quests at Wingrest Embassy, and then do all the quests you find in this area, including the side quests, with the exception of the Artisan's Supply. Untrack that one, as we will not be doing it unless you just happen to have the materials required on hand. After waiting a bit for some NPC RP, follow Sendrax to the next outpost and do those campaign quests there. Do not do any side quests in this area, just save the whelps, kill the Jardin, and move on to meet Rathian in the next area. While doing Rathian's quest, do the bonus objective as well. The rare right in the middle of this area, Dragon Hunter Egordon, is one we want to kill, and he counts for the bonus objective as well. Try to move him out of the lava, or you'll die rather quickly, as a tip. You are level 67 or more by this point, which is when the difficulty spike may start taking effect, so pull carefully and keep an eye on your health, because the Jardin can really hurt. After completing those quests and doing the bonus objective, continue to follow just the campaign quest and don't pick up any side quests. Most side quests just aren't worth much at this level. Once in the Lifebinder Conservatory, do the quest there as well as the rare, Firava the Rekindler. This rare can really hurt if you don't move out of its AoE, so be careful of that. Any stuns and self heals you got will be needed. After you save the egg, again, don't pick up any side quests and just let Solistra fly you over to the Ruby Life Pools area. Here it's the same deal. Do all of the campaign quests, don't do any side quests except for when you come to Veridastraz, the old dwarf. I know it's mean, but you can sit with him and not listen to his tale for a bit of extra XP, so let's do that. Continue to follow the campaign quests and do the training races that Lord Andestraz has for you including when he sends you over to the Skytop Observatory. Do all of the quests there as well that show you around and act as if you were new. I'll take the easy XP. One important NPC here is Salormu, who you will need to talk to for a quest. He'll give you three racing quests that we're going to use in step five of this guide. So make sure to pick up all three and then go ahead and track them for later. If you do not have all three quests available, which are the regular tour, the advanced tour, and the reverse tour, you can still do step 5, but it will take you much longer because you'll have to unlock them as you go. But don't fret, once you unlock them once, they are available for all your alts forever, even at level 60. Anyhow, continue on with the campaign quests here and just save the races for later. When you get to the quest where Relastraza flies you up to the top of the tower, this is where we're going to veer off for some side quests. Check your map before diving off and locate the quest just north of you called Site Salvage. That's where we're going. Head down there and do all the quests you find in that area, including the one from a goblin you'll find when going to get the Orb of Primal Waves. 
A trick here when getting the NPC and orb located in the wind area is to fly up really high and hit the side paths quickly before getting dismounted so that you can go straight to the spots you need. I'll show you here how I do it since it took a bit of finagling to learn. There you go, hopefully that visual helps you. Either way, continue on with these quests until you complete the whole chain of elements and titan stuff, and then head back to the ruby life pools to continue the campaign. There are no more side quests in this route, but I'll keep guiding you anyways. After an epic cutscene with Rezageth and Alexstrasza, head down to the snowy area and continue the quests. You'll notice a bonus objective pop up, but don't purposely try to complete it yet because it covers a large area and will mostly complete itself. And before you complete the Basalt Assault quest, great name, there's a rare out here we want, Terralod the Devout. Dart over and take him out before continuing. Once you head into Flash Frost to rescue eggs and take out the Proto Drakes, you'll find the enemies in this area all count for the bonus objective, including our next and last rare in the middle, Klausik the Ascended. Do the rare and do the quest even up through the Frost Proto Jadzigath toward the end because killing that one counts for the bonus objective too. And if you're not done after killing him, finish the objective and then move on. After all that, turn in the quest to Celestra after talking to her next to Alexstrasza, and we're done! Just like Azure Span, we are not doing the last leg of the campaign in this zone. Unlike Azure Spans though, this one does give good XP, but it just takes too long and is really difficult at this level since you should now be 68 or higher. If you intend on doing any rep grinds with this alt, I want to point out that now that you're level 68, if you head over to where the Rathian Awaits quest would take you, you should see a bronze drake waiting for you. This is a skip that's been added for alts level 68 or higher that'll take you right to the end of the Obsidian Citadel stuff. You don't have to do that, but I'm letting you know it's there. Now, this is the end of step 4. Yay! If you were as fast as I am, you would have only taken 3.5 hours to reach level 68.3 or more. Don't fret if you weren't that fast though, I've had a lot of practice, and you will too at some point. So, as you can imagine, this is where we have some choices, because not only does the XP really slow down now, the open world difficulty really ramps up. Option 1, Dragon Races. This is the option I'm going with myself. It may not be the fastest on record, but it's easy, fun, and you'll even walk out with a couple thousand gold. Leveling in the open world with quests at 68 plus really doesn't feel great, so this lets us skip that grossness. Those three dragon racing quests we picked up in the Waking Shore are what we're going to do here, so here's how this works. The very first time you do these races, you get about a half to three quarters of a quest's worth of XP. But it's only the first time you do them and it never resets. That's why I told you not to do them when you did the other world quests at lower level. The normal, advanced, and reverse versions of each race in all four zones will all give you XP once. The best part is the three quests we do will guide us to each race and check off when we complete it. Plus, they are retroactive quests so you'll know if you've already done any of the races from the moment you pick them up. So, simply follow those quests and do the races. When you turn into three for the Waking Shores, you'll be sent to the next zone, which is the Anaran Plains, and so on until you hit level 70 or do all four zones. You will want to turn on War Mode here again, because we will need that XP to make sure we can hit 70 by the end. You can't be attacked while racing or during the takeoff countdown, so you don't need to worry too much. Option 2, Time Walking Dungeons. Again, these are a good alternative to questing or the races if you don't want to do those. But just like before, the time here is completely RNG since how long the queues are and who you pug with will vary greatly. Plus, these are only available when time walking is active. 
so check your calendar if you want these. Option 3, continue questing. I don't really recommend this one, but if you want, you can continue questing through the rest of Wicking Shores and perhaps head into the other zones if you didn't do them in the first step. The times here are awful though, because the XP is slow and the difficulty is high, but it's still your choice. Whichever you choose, congratulations on hitting level 70! My best time for this seems to be 5 hours, and boy was that a slog, but hey, we did it! Now, are you ready to do it again? Did you know I stream on Twitch now? I do everything from transmog to leveling to gold making, and I'm live 5 days a week to chat with, so come hang out! And there we have it! If you think I've missed information, or you want to request I do a specific guide, let me know in the comments below. Even if I don't answer you, I just might add your idea to my list. As always, thank you so much for watching, and remember, it's never too latte.